Hey everybody, what's up? How you doing? My name is Eddie and welcome back to King's Court. Before I begin today's video, I want to say real quickly, please like, share, and subscribe to this video for uh, future, future videos, really. Because uh, we're about to get down to the end of the playoffs and well, let's just, uh, let's just get on with the video, shall we? Clippers! As I said, Tyrone Lue was going to make his adjustments, and he did. You were able to see it. Patrick Beverly started for the first time in over a month. Uh, Zubat played more minutes, or a lot of the more critical minutes than Nick Batum did. Uh, and his defensive assignments, uh, they, they did change uh, for the better. What is it? Devin Booker didn't go for 40 again didn't hit the 50 the 30 point mark and certainly not the 25 point mark but he did hit the most important shot of the game to put the clippers <clears throat> in a must needed position to score a bucket and some free throws but before we get to all that let's just take it back a notch and let's just get down to what i said should happen but didn't demarcus cousins this dude played too much again. He played for too long. He stayed on the floor for too long. Way more time than I would have liked to see him. He played in the final minutes of the game, of which I didn't want to see either, but we'll get into that a little later. DeMarcus Cousins. I'm going to make a take, and a lot of people might agree with this, but no one says anything about it. DeMarcus Cousins, it, he cares more about his bad guy reputation and being tough than he does about being a good basketball player again. Now look, is it harsh? Yeah, sure, I guess, but this is sports. This is where we criticize athletes for how they behave and how they do. Look, DeMarcus Cousins, with his time, he's shown more frustration than any clipper on the roster and even so with Paul George Patrick Beverly who he, he could be a hothead but you know he still does his work on the defensive end and he still scores big buckets when he needs to DeMarcus doesn't do that he just goes out of his way it commits four fouls in five minutes he gets technicals for little things. I get it. He has a reputation, but he puts it on himself sometimes. Like the shove against Booker, who he was just uh, uh, given a tech for just this morning. Or afternoon, where, wherever you are, wherever you may be. This man, he cares more about his reputation and being tough than he does about his basketball skills. Because look... Yeah, he's still an NBA player. He's still better than a large percentage of the population in the world. But don't you want to go back to the DeMarcus Cousins that was uh, an all-star? A bucket getter? I mean, could you be any more dumb as a, what, 30-year-old by now? This guy does not score like he used to. I don't think it's 100% his injury. Yes, it's a setback just like the, the Derek Rose might uh, preach that. Yeah, it does set you back a little bit, but I would think his jump shot's still there. I would assume that his toughness in the, in the post area would be pretty damn, you know, efficient. This guy has got to give a lot more than what he's given. If I were Tyron Lu, Chauncey Billups, or Kenny Atkinson, anybody in that assistant coach area, put him in check. Because something about just wanting to be a tough guy, be that, I guess, Marcus Morris player in the center position, it's not cutting out to be what you would want from a former All-Star. Bench him. We were doing just fine with him on the bench. Yeah, we need some more bigs to cover what's his name, DeAndre Ayton, and to score on the, uh, Dario Saric. And he did put up some okay numbers in the first game. Second game, I don't think he did too much to 
put a statement or his mark on the game. I don't think he did as much. Bench him already. Put in anybody else. Put in anyone that could defend, uh, uh, you know, on the post. Someone that's quick on a double team. Do something else or just stop playing DeMarcus Cousins so much. Rondo, I could I could uh, take back a little bit of what I said about Rondo in regards to getting an offense going and, you know, just the little things. But uh, I don't think it was critical in any, any particular part of the game. I still don't like his chances out there at the three. I still don't like how he's being a floor general and kind of just, I guess, leading the offense. He kind of just takes up the ball and, uh, you know, all right, so, hey, who wants it? That's all Rondo does. He doesn't find the cutters. He found one for Luke Kennard. That's it. That's the only time he made a beautiful pass, a beautiful assist, and uh, that's it. That's all we're getting from Rajon Rondo. I guess we could see more of Rondo just for the sake of having more bodies uh, to play, but uh, I don't think this guy should be playing as much as he did once again. Uh, he was in, in the, I think, the fourth quarter or the third. I didn't want to see him, but Tyron Lue still trusts him for whatever reason. I don't know what it was, but uh, I guess Tyron Lue knows his team better than I do. Maybe. I'll just trust Tyron Lue's judgment. I mean, he is a proven coach. He'll do his necessary adjustments, hopefully, for the next one tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at Staples Center. That of which I hope everyone shows up and makes some noise. Staples Center has to live up to the, the crowds that the Clippers have been playing against. Utah was pretty loud. Phoenix is pretty damn loud. They they love their Phoenix Suns team. The Clippers fans, Clipper Nation should be doing that for the Clippers. I think it'll be loud. Hopefully it is. Because that's two games that we, the Clippers, let slip away for, you know, a uh, 40-point triple-double do from Devin Booker. A uh, 29-point game from, what's his name? Cameron Payne. Slow him down. I There were a couple. There was one particular travel that wasn't uh, called where Paul George was guarding him. I don't know why that wasn't ruled the walk, but... I guess we're just going to let players do whatever they want sometimes. Uh, I guess if it doesn't interfere with the, with the uh, tensions of the game, I guess we just let players do whatever they want, huh? And now let's get down to the final minutes of the game. The ball was off DeAndre Ayton, not Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann knew that it was off DeAndre Ayton. That air ball should have been a clipper ball. Terrence Mann was hyped about it, and if there's one thing I know about Terrence Mann from watching him, he reacts immediately after every play, whether it be good or bad. He 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 expresses his emotions properly. He's not over the top, and he's not very quiet, but he does what he's got to do. I don't know why the refs think DeAndre Ayton was not the person that touched the ball last. It should have been off DeAndre Ayton, and it should have been Clipper Ball at that time. Next, we get to Paul George missing two free throws that would have put the Clippers up by more, and then they they might have had uh, Devin Booker, Cameron Payne, shoot a three to tie the game or lose the game. I'm not going to say he's a choke. I don't believe it. I think it's just, uh, you know... You just didn't hit your shot. I mean, you don't always hit your shots, even though free throws are kind of a given. You you make 90% of 100 at his level. But, man, was that a heartbreaker, not seeing Paul George hit the two to extend the lead. It was a bad game for Paul George. A lot of people give him a D minus, C minus. For his performance, and I think that's that's fair. The Clippers certainly, as a team, did do what they had to to keep the game close. It just wasn't enough. Oh 
Oh man, that was tough. And then let's get back to the alley oop play to win the game. Here's what I found out yesterday night. You could throw a ball to the hoop and that not be called the goaltend for. For what? Okay, say he makes it. Say it's right above the cylinder, you just tap it down. How are you supposed to defend such a play? From what I've been able to see from many clips, many uh, defensive possessions, different, de I'm sorry, defensive stances. I hate the word defensive position, but possession, but uh, that I digress. How are you supposed to defend such, such a play? You can't push the offensive player. That's a foul. You can't put your hand underneath the hoop so the ball doesn't go in. That's goaltending. The rim is protecting the player from getting a, the ball intercepted or tapped away. How are you supposed to defend such a play? The NBA didn't find a fallacy in such a play from out of bounds? All you got to do as an, as, a, as an inbounder is just throw it up there and then just hope you put enough strength into it that the, that the person jumping for the alley-oop puts it down? You all saw Zubat's uh, wrist hit the rim. How is he supposed to defend that? Granted, he should have stopped DeAndre Ayton from going to I, Zubat's left, DeAndre Ayton's right, and letting him cut to the basket. Zubat should have stopped that and just put the body on him so he has to go around and, you know, force a five-second violation or a different play to finish the game. But how are you supposed to defend that? The NBA should look into that and look, this could have been my Clipper team. I would have said the same thing. Zubat hits a uh, alley oop with uh, 0.4 seconds to go. I would have said the same thing. What's stopping any player from scoring that basket every time? The NBA should look look over that because that's just BS, for the lack of a better word. Look into it. Change it in the off season. Review this. Look at how many different scenarios the defensive players or defensive team has the opportunity to stop such a play and outweigh the odds. Anyway, I'm not too happy about this loss. Of course, that's two games where the Clippers should have won. I'm telling you all, they're the better team in the Western Conference. They've proven it. They just, they're just fatigued. And I really wanted to step away from the fatigue narrative right now because it, it's gonna grow tiresome. No pun intended, but it is gonna get ridiculous down the road. But it's valid, isn't it? 36 hours of rest in between games? Unacceptable. So anyway, I think it's on the Clippers for allowing this to happen. I mean, what they missed, five threes in a row, three point attempts in a row. Paul George missed his two free throws. Uh, what else? I mean, this goes all the way around. Why did Cameron Pay have the game of his life? Why couldn't the Clippers team put someone better than DeMarcus guarding the inbound? He looked clueless. He didn't even look like he knew what he was doing. Yes, he's got hype, but what? Height could only take you so far. Taco Fall had, has, is not a superstar, but he can't move. DeMarcus Cousins shouldn't have been guarding the inbound. There was no way he should have been guarding the inbound. He looked lost. He was barely even moving his arms. He was guarding the inbound on a, the, the worst angle. Who's going to... Who, what inbounder is going to toss the ball that direction, DeMarcus? He should have been angled to stop an alley play. A three? Screw it. Just let them chuck it. But, you know, this one is just going to have to be swallowed. 
And we're just going to have to go into game three at Staples down 0-2. I would like to see the Clippers pull it off, but with the rumor that Chris Paul is intending to play Thursday night, I don't like the Clippers' chances. Kawhi Leonard needs to be back. He's been the most op efficient offensive and defensive player so far in these playoffs. I don't see them winning without him. I absolutely think Kawhi Leonard should be in so we could have a chance at completely turning this series around but until the Clippers lose and allow the Suns to get four wins I don't see a reason why we should still doubt the Clippers now hopefully it's a good one tomorrow but tonight we got the Hawks versus the Bucks at Milwaukee should be good I hope to see Trey Young balling again. I hope to see him uh, giving us the theatrics as he's been giving us. It's a real treat to watch. That's mostly what I'm looking forward to. Hopefully the Bucks don't beat him in five. Hopefully this goes up to seven again. I would love to see it. That's all I got for today's video. As you can see, I'm not too happy about the position the Clippers are in, but uh, I'll just see it to the end until the Clippers are completely eliminated. The series is not over, and I don't count on the Suns to be this hot again. It takes a lot of luck for a team to win a championship. Maybe this is one of them. The Clippers are still the better team, and I still believe in them. So should you, Clipper Nation. So... What are your thoughts? I just want to tell you again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I wish I could show you all my little boy Zeus, but uh, he's not that tall, even though he's a Dogo Argentino. Anyway, that's all I got for you all today. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow and I'll give you my thoughts on the Bucks-Hawks game. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. I'm out.